Good afternoon, Perry Nopert from the Octopus Movement. Good morning, Sarah. <laughs> yes, it's morning here on the West Coast. And you are in the Netherlands, is that right? That's correct. And it's here at five in the afternoon. Let's, I don't know what we, but we're, we don't know what's about to happen, but let's start with what is the octopus movement? Hmm. Um, yes, well, the, um, the octopus movement is a global movement where we create the awareness of the awesomeness of atypical thinkers. So that's the official explanation, right? This is about weirdos, misfits. This movement is created because the cool kids are not the cool kids. The cool kids are the weirdos. This has been created because so many people that I've interviewed that are wiredly different differently wired in their brain. And they all had something in common. One is curious misfits. I consider myself as a curious misfit. I'm so flipping curious that wins of almost every fear that I have in my system. The curiosity wins. And then a misfit because I'm a misfit. <laughs> basically. So we all have that in common, curious misfits. And a lot of people, almost all the people that I've interviewed, I've interviewed over a hundred people, over a hundred misfits. And they all said the same thing. If the world would understand me a little bit better, I would have been able to do so much more and have a bigger impact. And I would be able to do awesome things and 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 be there for others or do an awesome job or create something amazing but the world is very linear the world is very much boxed the world is over specialized so if you don't fit in the box that's a difficult place to start if you don't fit in the box and that's why i've created the octopus movement to Create that awareness that if you don't fit in the box, if you're a bit weird, then actually you're pretty cool. And all these weird people together can create something awesome. And I think the nonlinear thinkers are going to clean up the mess the linear thinkers made in this mm -hmm. world. I... There's a lot of threads there that I want to start with, but I think the I think we'll start with what does nonlinear thinking mean? Because I have this dream for this podcast about why humanity is worth the effort to a clean up the mess, um, and like why why that's important because our value as people is I'm also a very curious thinker I'm just wildly curious and I see a lot of beauty in the things that I seek out um, but what I find in that is a lot of hopelessness and despair and I and I fall into that often which is why I might have projects that keep my hope alive I think um, but yeah I want to start with the, what what does nonlinear thinking mean um and why i think most people can understand that this is a linear world and there are, and the weirdos can understand that but for the linear thinkers out there who maybe think that they're non-linear thinkers where do you draw the difference or yeah first of all i think everybody's a non-linear thinker and i okay. think whenever you come into this world you're very non-linear as a baby as a mm -hmm. as a little child and then you go to school and then you go into a system where you've been taught how to think in a linear way to achieve your goals. So you have to do your homework. You have to have a good grade in whatever. Then you get your diploma. And that diploma gives you an, an access point to a job. 
you know, and, and, and they, they invite you to have a conversation and now you're an official accountant so you can work at this office. That's very linear. Yeah. But before you go to school, this is, this is something Picasso said, said, and so many people know that phrase that, you know, every child is an artist and then they go to school. And then the artist is being removed from the child. And I think with nonlinear thinking, it's the same thing. You're being pushed in that linear pattern, which is not a negative thing. I'm not against that. The only problem I see is that it's the only thing. <laughs> I've, I've spoken with so many people that were, as a teenager, horrible in math. And their teacher said, you know, forget about it. This is horrible. You suck, basically. And then later on in life, they discover they're actually very good in math. But just their thinking wasn't in line with the method of education at, at the high school. And hmm. they strongly believe themselves that they suck in math. Or I know so many very well-paid writers that got the message at high school from their English professor. Don't write. It's not, it's never going to work. I'm not saying that it's with all writers, the case, but with a lot of nonlinear writers, you know, things. It's, it's difficult. And, and I'm going to explain why. So that's linear, nonlinear thinking, right? Mm -hmm. Linear thinking is atypical thinking. So you're not going from A, B, C, and D. You're going into all directions. Everything is possible in your thinking. It means creating a company without a business plan. It's creating art, a painting, without thinking about what you're going to paint. It's writing a book without a complete outline and whatever. It's just writing and it's, and it's just flowing. That's nonlinear thinking. And I lost myself what I wanted to say about that linear thinking. Um, I forgot it. Too nonlinear, my my brain sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe maybe it'll come back because yeah. I I'm hearing. Well, maybe it's a, you're reflecting my my um, deep desire for education reform, and I feel like that's just been one of the biggest silver linings of COVID is that so there's been so many innovative ways to push out of the public education system, at least here in the U S mm -hmm. um, that parents from what I've seen in, in some, you know, not across the board are kind of looking at the system of, of public school and going, this isn't, I mean, if it's breaking down now, maybe it's always been broken. And so they're doing cool things to, to create a nonlinear learning environment for, for children. How cool would that be? Right. Yeah. I'm wondering what that looks like to you. Like, cause to me, it looks like nature, like outdoor schools and, um, you know, more skills, earth-based skills that practical skills, um, and maybe creativity comes from that or, how to keep creativity alive, how to keep a curious mind um, curious so that the artist isn't taken out of the human at such a young age. Yeah. I, I see it as um, a nonlinear school. I teach at schools about nonlinear thinking. I teach kids about what nonlinear thinking is. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really fun because I'm explaining these kids, don't listen to your teacher and just <laughs> sitting still is isn't always the best thing to do and making your homework isn't the holy grail um yeah. and then i see the teachers looking at me like what the hell is this dude doing but mm -hmm. then you see immediately that these kids are opening up and and recently i was in a school where there was a kid with dyslexia and nonlinear thinking oh this is what i wanted to say with nonlinear thinking so some people find it difficult to just stay in that linear thinking pattern and you see in the world that especially people with neurodiversity 
that they can't help themselves to be in both worlds. They cannot just stay in the educated linear world. They have to be in the nonlinear world as well. And I have dyslexia and ADHD. My brain, you, you cannot push my brain into a linear thinking pattern. It's impossible, right? I can adjust myself into linear thinking. That's fine. I use linear thinking a lot by create, in, in creating this global movement with all my Excel sheets and databases, of course. But I can help myself to make weird connections that are not the obvious connections. And I, and I see that at school also. And I, and I was teaching about nonlinear thinking. It was this little kid, nine-year-old, who has dyslexia. And he was, he was never talking about his dyslexia in class, not at school. And teachers were having an issue with that. You know, he has dyslexia. And it was, he was really tense about that. And I told the, the story of the octopus, why the octopus is very nonlinear and three hearts and nine brains and eight arms and super cool. And, and explaining that there is more than, that, than just that rigid pattern to follow. And after an hour or something, he raised his hand and he said, yeah, I have dyslexia. And the teachers were like, oh. now he's sharing this in class and it took us forever and he, he didn't want to do it. And all of a sudden for him, it was like an opening up of, it's fine to be different because it's a cliche, of course. We're all talking about neurodiversity and diversity and it's okay to be different. It's not. Go to school, go back in your teenage years. It's not okay, right? And sometimes we pretend to be cool by being not okay, but it's not okay. Right. It's it's fucking difficult, yeah. and it's and you just want to be seen. You you just want to be loved. You just want to be liked. You just want to be appreciated. You just want to be connecting with others. And if these others are looking at you only, thinking you're weird because you're not following our unwritten rules, that's ridiculous. So how do I see my the the nonlinear school? Almost like a a design learning system where we adjust as, as far as possible how it can work for the individual person and not and it's not you know to in today's world just to have one method to achieve something in learning is ridiculous it's not of this world and many i see many posts when you look in education that people are saying it's ridiculous we're learning things at school that are not from this world, meaning it's either right or wrong. That's ridiculous. That's not real life. It's not black and white like that. In education, you have to do everything by yourself. That's not what real life is all about. It's about working together, etc. So I, I hope that the nonlinear education system, the new one, will create that awareness of linear and nonlinear thinking. That in class, they can say, okay, this is, this is a topic, and for an hour, we will stay very linear. And then for a half an hour, we go very nonlinear. Just the awareness that we divide that, I think will be awesome, because it allows people to be different and really to have diversity. And I've seen that at Montessori school my kids went to in, in Beijing, in China. It was beautiful. You know, they, they had this little mat on the floor and they could play on that mat, whatever they wanted to do and, and move and, and, and jump and play. And that was their area and it was their safe space to do whatever they wanted to do. And then it was the end of it and you roll it up and you clean everything up and then you go sit in your chair and... That for me was also a little bit linear, nonlinear. And I think that would, that would be very cool if we could achieve something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm very struck by <clears throat> you reminding me and people that it's not okay to be different. I do think that we are pushing, we, um, 
diversity of thought and um, really wanting, at least, you know, America's very individualistic culture, like we, everyone's unique and different and that's okay. And we're fully accepting, but at the end of the day, it's not when you're, when you're, especially at a school, at a linear school, when you're in a system that is actively, (laughs) you know, trying to help. And I think a lot of the teachers, you know, are, are there because they want to be a teacher and they want to, to teach kids and help kids but I don't think the system is the system that a lot of teachers are in is designed for that individual attention and I even find this with groups of of 20 or 30 kids um, that I work with right now like it's really hard to get um, to track fully um, a big group of kids and I, and that's what I'm, I mean, I'm at a wilderness awareness school with, with trackers, you know, so they, they, they're yeah. using these skills with, with kids. Like we, our debriefs are so rich because we're talking about individual people in the classroom, but I, I, I'm in this apprenticeship to learn in this style. And that's so rare, it seems. And I, and I feel like even then I'm like, there's more, we need more time to really go into the depth of, of the possibility for each student. And I'm just curious about the the systems that could be built to actually achieve what you're saying um, to create space for. And maybe that's just it. Maybe I say all that and I'm like, well, maybe just bringing the awareness to students and classrooms is enough to create just a little bit of space for kids not to feel so different and to be seen in that way for that one student is. Well, and, and I think we need to change. Because the world is changing. I don't know. You know, look at AI today. Oh, God, yeah. I, I have a strong opinion about that. I love AI. I think AI is just rock and roll. And let me explain this, why. AI is linear thinking. We can agree with that, right? And now, all of a sudden, as a nonlinear thinking thinker, I have the tools to use not to use linear thinking very easily hmm. and and i think that's something we have to bring into education as well because you know with that new chat uh, gtp or what is it called um i saw some professors online going oh dear you know oh dear if students now understand exactly what you can do with these ai solutions then they can write using the AI and, and we, it's, it's how, how are we going to do it? But it's, it's finally that time that we talk about this because if my, I have three kids, if my kids want to learn something, they're not asking their teacher, they go on YouTube and figure it out very fast. And that's using their brain to get the knowledge what they want. And I think in the future, that creative thinking is going to be so important because we've solved the linear thinking. And of course, a lot of linear thinkers are not going to be pleased with these AI tools. Because if I want to make a, a contract for leasing out my house, I just, it just takes me one minute and I don't have to pay a lawyer to get that. Hmm. And it's very linear. So I don't need a, and if it's very simple, then we, then we use these AI tools. So where do we go from there? Is everybody without a job? No, I think we're going to make a, a huge leap forward in creating new solutions in the world. And that can be a very positive change where we can save and solve big issues, but we need creative minds. Because the standard thinking in a linear way, which what we learned at school, that's been taken care of by AI now. So the educational system will change if we like it or not, and is going to be very focused in creative and nonlinear thinking. Otherwise, it, it doesn't make any sense anymore. I think that that's what will change very soon. And two years ago, I was thinking I'm not going to interfere with the educational system because it's too difficult to change and and whatnot. Now I'm thinking, holy shit, we need to do something now 
because it's already changing and the educational system, they don't want to, they don't want to hear this, right? They don't want to listen to this, but it's already changing. These kids are, are, are going to use these AI tools like they use Google and school is not going to do anything against it. They cannot say when you're at home doing your homework, you're not allowed to use AI tools. It's ridiculous. It's saying when you do your homework, you cannot search for anything on Google and on YouTube. No. Yeah. So it will change. And it's, I'm, I'm, I'm so freaking excited about it because there's only one solution and that's a huge focus forward to creative thinking. I have not thought of it like that yet. And I'm really grateful for that perspective because AI can scare the crap out of me sometimes. Um, but the possibilities that I don't even know of yet, like that one, like how it actually could create space for, are you talking about like full human creative capacity? Like, are you talking about like ways that that students could stay artists and like remain artists into adulthood? Yeah. Yeah. That would be cool because you don't need to <laughs> go cool. back to that rigid, you know, you need to do math and you need to do biology because otherwise you don't have your diploma and you cannot do anything. It's not necessary anymore. How cool is that? Yeah, it is odd that like, so many like like I feel like I waited until college to get like spe specified classes mm -hmm. on like what I was actually interested in like literally until I was like 20 years old it was finally in these like high level classes where I was like okay this is the kind of stuff I really want to learn and I'm finally with other people who are just as jazzed about this super specific stuff um but even then at that level, at university level, it was all these classes that had nothing to do with my degree, but because I transferred to the school, they forced me to take them. And I think of now that I've like learned about permaculture and I have kind of like can put words and language to like my systems thinking mind a little bit. Um, I'm like so much wasted energy on shit that I didn't even, I didn't even know how to integrate <laughs> um into like what I was actually passionate about which I kind of think that I had the wherewithal and the capacity to get that nitty-gritty with the stuff that I cared about 10 years prior mm. so yeah I I love that we're just ending up on like this whole education reform thing because that's see it feels like that's where it's at because I love it's not a linear versus non-linear you know you're a linear thinker you're a non-linear thinker I do agree with you that like we're all linear, non-linear in some, in some regard, or at least we have the capacity to be so creative to see solutions to the problems that are right in front of our faces. Yeah. And we can go so much faster now because we can just say to the AI, create this. You know, you have your creative mind and you just say, box this for me. And then that box is ready. And then you say, box this for me. And you unbox it, put it together create more around it and and there it is which goes so much faster now and creates so much more possibilities to uh, i've written a manifesto for on the on 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 the website on on the octopus movement where where i stated the solutions are here on earth not at mars we don't need to go to mars you know it's mm -hmm. fine that some people want to figure out how we can go to mars and live there but i want to stay here and I want to figure it out here. And I want to figure out how we can do this, how we can create basic income for, for everyone. That would be awesome. How we can solve food and where nobody on the planet has to starve anymore. I want to find a solution for homeless people. I've been homeless for seven months. It's awful. And the linear system I just made a post. I think it's a funny one on Twitter. Let me read it to you. AI thinks in a linear way, but still understands me better than most people because it won't judge me. Right? And when I was homeless, the difficulty was, wasn't in being homeless. The difficulty was in dealing with people around you, my parents, my friends, my my uh, uh, ex-partner that was difficult hmm. 
that was very difficult. And I think we need to solve a few issues here on this planet. And I think we can do that. And I think the linear thinking has reached the max where it's all about shareholders value and, and increasing and more money and more money and more influence and more power. That's, that's the end of it. I'm, I'm positive about that. That's not what it's about. We've reached the max and, and it's, it's over and done because now a huge group of people on the planet will be able to enter so much influence because it became so much easier. Now. You don't have to hire a lawyer or a marketing specialist to achieve your goals anymore. You can do everything yourself. So if a, a huge group of people are connected and are growing together, then the huge power struggle that there is now where there's the top one percent who controls everything maybe i'm too optimistic but i think that will change i th i think it could i i think it does seem like we're at a tipping point or something i think so um, and and without being hocus pocus you know it's just right it's very it's simple so obvious but, in front of our faces yeah it's it yeah. not nothing can conspiracy shit or I think the planet is flat or that kind of crap this is just we have so many people on this planet that are so awesome that are so loving and caring and, and, and awesome and the power goes to the linear minds who control everything and goes for shareholder value and pushes it as hard as possible with lawyers and boxes and that will change. And the beauty is they changed it themselves by creating AI. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, that could, yeah, mm. oh, I lost my train of thought now too. To all but the maybe, threads. Maybe I am, I'm, maybe I am crazy. Maybe I'm rambling and maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. You no. know, Sarah, I, I don't know. But I what I do know, and that's the octopus movement where I see we have around 2,500 people in the movement within one and a half year time in wow. over 58 countries. And the people in the movement are so freaking awesome. And they all can be themselves. They all understand each other. There is diverse. We don't even talk about diversity because as soon as you talk about diversity, it doesn't exist anymore, in my opinion. So... Can all you kinds say of about that? Why why does it not does it not exist when you um, start to talk about it? Well, if if you talk about diversity, true diversity means everything. And when you and when you talk about diversity, you're boxing immediately. Mm. Mm. And as soon as you box, you don't have everything. This is the problem we have when things become complicated. Want to simplify. And the only way to simplify now for us is to create boxes and labels. And then we can say, you know, I, I find queer people so weird or I find gay people so strange or, you know, it's simplifying something that they cannot understand themselves. And as, as long as we talk about diversity, then we still don't understand it. I mean, I, that's an interesting example because I feel in in my exploration of my sexuality, I feel like it's really hard to even tick a box sometimes. Um, and and yet, yeah, we're I'm, we're having these discussions about why the that diversity is so important. So it almost seems like our the way we talk about diversity is linear. Yeah, very linear. Flipping yeah. hell, yeah. And we're not doing that in the movement, and that's what's so cool. Hmm. That people from all over the world, they're all connected. I always call that the mycelium because I hate the word community. That's too much box for me. Again, community, you know, it's its a group of people. You put a fence around it. That's a community. Hell no. For hmm. me, it's a, a mycelium. It's like in nature where the trees are all connected and they're taking care of each other. That's what the octopus movement is. All the, 
these people are all over the world. They're all connected in a way, if they're aware of it or not, that doesn't matter. And we're taking care of each other, even if we're not aware of it. And that's awesome. That's what it is about for me. And then you have real diversity. I don't like talking about diversity because it's like there are, it's now a bit of a trend to talk about neurodiversity. And then I see people on LinkedIn all of a sudden giving lectures and trainings about neurodiversity to HR managers. So that's very linear. It gives me the creeps, you know. And then I saw a training from Deloitte. Someone sent it to me. A training for HR managers about neurodiversity. I will explain to you why I find that already difficult, but okay. Um, and then step one, how to recognize someone with neurodiversity. <laughs> right? right? It's, are you fucking kidding me? That's, then we don't understand at all. And, mm -hmm. and for me, I have a feeling that these large companies, and of course people are making a shitload of money with that, but they're just ticking the box. Yes, we did a training on neurodiversity. Yes, we have neurodiversity in our, in our business plan or whatever, in our annual year report about how things are going and, and HR managers. HR managers are so flipping linear all the time. They use a software tool to scan resumes to see and if they can find the right people for the job, right? Think about no, it. Think about it. It's, you know, then, so I, I want to become a marketing director of Nike. So I need to go, I, I, I should have been attending an Ivy League university and at least 35 years of experience at, at A-level companies and and then I can be a very good marketing director for Nike. Yes, then you know all the unwritten rules and then you speak their, their own language. But are you really the best one? Are you really the one, you know? You've ticked all the boxes. And then that's the, that's the, I feel like I'm thinking of the word competency. Like, I, I feel like we're getting back to That's why I think like the, the, the thing that keeps the artist alive is these skills, these like actual skills that a human being knows how to do that isn't, you know, this non, I know computers are real, right? And I know AI is real. I know all of it's real, but like you're describing things that, you know, to be the marketer, you have all of this experience doing things that I just... And yeah, maybe this, maybe I'm idealistic in this way of like, but are they, are they helping us create a better world? Like actually better humans, like more, are we happier and more grounded and more centered? And, and I see creative capacity as like a core human need. And are you getting that met? Do you feel fulfilled? Is your soul you know are you in touch with that whatever that means um no. I don't know and I don't know I've met millionaires who are just who are that who do embody of that of course too. yeah and and so like not not to say that like money or job or status is 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 necessarily tied to all that but but that hierarchical like just striving to strive um yeah maybe i maybe that's the linear like um when people actually do follow that it seems somewhat exhausting to me <laughs> yeah and uh, yeah well for some no the thing is for some people it works right <clears throat> don't don't get me wrong so okay for some people and that's 80% probably or 70% of all humans they kind of like that structure of linear thinking and they go to the diploma and their job and status and the Mercedes Benz and the swimming pool and wonderful, you know. And by the way, I love Mercedes Benz. I think it's one of the best cars. So I'm 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 not against that, you know. And and yeah. I love to enjoy the good life. And that's not what it's about. So some people are really confident and and they feel well in 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 linear thinking. We need. It's about Working together, it's about a, a good balance. 
where we can create something awesome together rather than you know nonlinear thinking is better than linear thinking or it's it's I just I just needed two words to explain my feeling basically and yeah and this really helps a lot also for my kids you know I have three kids with neurodiversity and it really helps to explain your own feelings well teacher was very linear today yeah it was really nothing was possible and he really didn't understand me and it really helps to explain your own frustration in a way so is it everything no it's it's not but it's it, it just allows me to explain something how i um how i feel this and how it works in being in contact with other people that are also very non-linear and everybody is also linear but you know what i mean just... totally i and i feel like in what i just said it even kind of circles back to like in a like a linear loop kind of way like they're not right or wrong it's not right or wrong to be linear or non-linear we are just using language to describe two ways of being in the world that i do think both are necessary because i did the very linear thing in some ways i still strive to do the linear thing me too because it helps it it yes. does it gives my life handlebars to 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 kind of like what is it what are the bumpers in bowling called the guardrails i don't know or... but i can see it in front of me yeah you yeah. don't want to go over there yeah <laughs> yeah it gives my it gives my life yeah. something to deal with all the chaos that i can i can wield <laughs> i can wield that just like utter chaos and connections that sometimes I, I I actually have gotten lost in like the connections that I can make in the pathways that I can do and 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 yeah so I do see how how it does work for some most people and and how I I do get a lot of joy um being in the nature education realm or the the like this summer I did summer camps parkour summer camps um in Seattle and like these wild storytelling children who just love to run through the forest and then like their parents who work for Microsoft or or Boeing or Amazon because it's Seattle um show up in their Teslas and and they're so ordered and their children are so wild and and I see the way that they can connect to that and it just gives me a lot of Funny. hope that yeah. like most people most people have access to both of these ways oh yes oh, and yes. most people know how to deal with both in a degree so i yeah. i do think it goes back to what we started with at the yeah. very beginning like just creating space both for children and adults to acknowledge like hey you're doing both well and maybe like cut yourself some slack on like exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And and when your child is going very nonlinear, and and you're a mom and your name is Karen, <laughs> and and you're lost, right? <laughs> it's so nice to think about it this way that that Karen can think, oh, maybe I'm a bit too linear, and my child is going mm -hmm. in a very nonlinear way. How cool is that? I've I've spoken to many parents who contacted mm -hmm. me with this question, you know. Mm -hmm. My child is is behaving totally differently than I was expected, and what I think is the norm, and and what should I do? And my child has neurodiversity, and is it because of the neurodiversity? And it's funny, right? Can I ask you um, some larger questions about humanity? Yes. Um, because this was when we first spoke, I was like curious what I would even call this podcast and I was like I don't even want to call it a podcast but I kind of think I want to <laughs> just so it falls under yeah otherwise people don't understand what you're doing so give yeah it the right label yeah. right yeah and then I don't right and then I don't understand that's a perfect example of my lawn linearness just being mm -hmm. like it's fine I don't have a mission but I do have a fucking mission and like yeah. it's to make the world a better place and I because I believe we can I what I just said is like we have the capacity to to wield both of these not just both but like multiple ways multiple gifts within multiple people who 
their environment is telling them that that's not okay to shut down whatever part of them is coming alive that doesn't fit with the linear model that they're in. Um, so I have this deep belief that humans are trying to make the world a better place. Yes. And that humans are so cool and so worth the effort to nurture that creativity mm -hmm. because most of us are good people. So yeah. Um, and this might this might be a big there's just I have a lot of random ones so I'm just going to choose a few um, what gives you what gives you faith what gives you faith in humanity and hope for a better future and maybe you've already touched on it but maybe not well yeah well my my how i see the world changed when i started the octopus movement and the octopus movement was created in a organic way so i wasn't behind my desk thinking i'm going to create a global movement with a non-profit no so it just happened and it also just happened that in the first year i spoke with over 400 people in one-on-one -on -one zoom conversations just exploring what are we doing who are who are you so the first people that entered the octopus movement i knew all of them in the beginning the first were 500 people and that gave me a lot of positive power because you know what 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 was the most beautiful thing was to discover that even on zoom you talk with someone is you can feel a biological connection between two brains even when we're talk when we're communicating through a, a tv screen a, a, a monitor a laptop or whatever I sound very old now oh dear um <laughs> but <Whatever. laughs> using zoom yeah you can feel that connection yeah. and and i was meeting all these people and i could feel these connections and and although a lot of them also were in 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 not the best condition and not very happy even still so many cool things happened and i was thinking okay so that's what's out there as well because before that i became homeless i lost everything i was trying to organize my life back in a linear way talking to the government nobody wanted to help me i only saw that linear world that was according to me, against me, because I wasn't ticking all the boxes. And still, it doesn't work. You know, it's, it's, it, it's still weird in a way. But I don't care anymore. I don't mind anymore, because I know, I know so many amazing people. And it's not amazing people in your village, your friends and family. It's amazing people in Bangladesh, in South Africa, in New Zealand. It, in 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 Korea, in Japan, every in Moscow, in everywhere, and they're all so freaking awesome and and so kind and with so much love and no, I'm 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 very positive about where we're going and we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine because there's so many people that are so awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I strongly believe that. Me too. Yeah. I've met over, I mean, it really throughout COVID and lockdown, like just became so much more connected through Zoom and video calls with people all over the world. And I would just end up in these um, little like body work circles or classes or something. And then in a breakout room with people from six different countries and, or, you know, there's six of us and all over the world or something. And, and that connection that feeling of like my heart being able to reach across the earth like that what, cool. how is that possible yeah how the hell is that real yeah. but it is holy fuck yeah holy shit and and that's when you go to the octopusmovement.org i there's a statement there i want to connect one billion nonlinear thinkers together so it's funny you know now that everybody's a nonlinear thinker so i just want to create a billion people together that's it also yeah. not with the same mindset not with 
in a very nonlinear way. So every just connect for, for God's sake, right? And 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 be on the same page more or less. And and we're working together with an investment company in California. And the owner said to me, "So Perry, so uh, very serious voice. He's by the way very nonlinear. He's super cool, and his investment company is very nonlinear. So he goes against everything that is normal in the financial world. Super cool." But he said at some point to me, so Perry, what does it take to, what are the rules to be in the octopus movement? I said, no, there, this, is, this is organic. There are no rules. And it, and it annoys me when I go to, and I get these links of Facebook pages with other global communities or whatnot. And people send it to me and, oh, look at this. And, oh, cool. And then the first thing that I see is there are three rules, you know, right? And and this and this and this and you and and you have to behave like that and you have to be like that and you have to spread the word and I'm I'm so annoyed by that. No, just let it go, let it grow, let it be organic and and just connect and then we can do awesome things. My podcast is called the Home for Humanity podcast, mm -hmm. and. Or at least I think, I don't know, that could change. <laughs> <laughs> Someday I've got to decide though, your episode yeah. one. So here it is, episode one, the Home for Humanity podcast. Um, and why it, not? It's a good title, right? Yeah. And that's what I'm feeling is like this acknowledgement. We don't even need to connect about anything. We're acknowledging that it is already within our human capacity to connect with each other in an authentic way way and if we can see oh you're trying to make the world a better place and i'm trying to make the world a better place we can share our skills and our knowledge and that's all it takes it yeah. doesn't take rules or like an outline or a business plan or like some or a contract or yeah. shares or an investment nothing nothing so cool. nothing it nothing. takes nothing and that's why i think i love the non the nonlinear like capacity that the linear world can provide me guardrails to explore yeah. because that connection just is so natural that I mean I see it in like networking events I I think I think like the the progressive liberal mindset of America sometimes puts these boxes into like what progressive like healing looks like for our culture and that is so limiting I feel to the actual work that can happen because what what's underneath of all these assumptions and judgments and criticisms for the other is is like the solution <laughs> which is connection and maybe I'm just kind of like realizing this in our our conversation because it just seems so easy yeah um to just be accepting of like our our creative capacity and and yeah once we well th my next question is is um yeah maybe we're gonna like keep going like this but when is the time that you lost your faith or belief that he there is good in humanity When, when I enter a very linear situation still today, I, I, I just don't understand. Let me, let me give you a few examples. My, my daughter has dyslexia. I have dyslexia. Oh, God. It's not a party to be dyslexic. Sometimes I have to write a word and I have to go to Google and just type it in what I'm... And then Google has to guess what the hell I'm writing. And then it can take me five to 10 minutes to figure out what word it is that I want to write. That's how horrible it is. It's not just the spelling correction that creates the correct word in spelling. So when you have dyslexia, you can really be lost in, in using letters. It's really... <clears throat> so mm -hmm. voice to text is a really good solution for me. You know, that it, oh, that's how you write it. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> anyway. So my kids go to international education. 
And because we were expat family, we traveled to China, we lived in Belgium, we came back to the Netherlands. And my daughter was best in her class at a private international school. So everything was taken care of, everything was possible, and she was the best in her class. She was happy and everything was wonderful. Then we went to the Netherlands, we went to the school, and then she wasn't the best in the class anymore. She was the worst in the class because they didn't have the capacity to support her with her dyslexia. Mm. Very linear. They wanted to kick her out of school, move her to a local Dutch school. And because there was no spots available, she had to double the year. So she goes from IB education in best of her class to local school doubling the year because not because of her, but because there's not, not enough places available. She I had went to, to a grade, like re go the yeah, same year. Redo the grade because uh -huh. there was there was there was nothing available. I went to court. You know, I'm I'm a fucking rebel. Some things I go crazy about. This is a thing that I went crazy about. So school said, this is what we need to do. Her mother said, this is what we need to do. And I said, the hell no, we're not doing it. What, this is ridiculous. Why can't she stay there? And then we see how things go and evolve and we can take a decision later. I lost the case. She had to go to a local school and double the year. Then I'm lost. Because... I'm wondering, can't you see what's happening? And they can't because they're blindfolded by the linear system and they can't let that go. But those are the rules. I have to say the judge was very good and, and she took really a lot of time in this case. And I spoke with the judge and everyone for over an hour. It's <laughs> very long. And the judge said at some point, I'm lost. I don't know what to do anymore. The dad is right, you know, it, it, and I didn't have a lawyer. I was homeless. I still don't have an income. That's a whole different story, but I'm doing this all without money just to prove that it can be done in a nonlinear way. So I was there explaining everything. The judge said, I don't know anymore. The only thing to do is to ask child services for advice. <laughs> And child services was a 20, 22 year old just from college, right? And then you're 47 and you're a dad with three kids, traveled the world, seen it all, basically not, but you have some experience. And there's this 22 year old saying, well, you know, we have to listen to the advice of the school because that's how it works. And the school says, your daughter checks this out. box. Yeah, out. And she, she can't read and write. Remove her from this IB program, please. And, and I get very upset. Yeah. Very sad as well. And I'm, and I'm thinking about... You know, other, I've been homeless. I've been in line with other homeless people to register myself at the commune where I was, where I wanted to live, and they didn't want to register me because I didn't tick the boxes. I just came from Belgium back in the Netherlands. I didn't have an employment contract. I didn't have anything. I didn't have an income. So they didn't want to register me because then they had to give me an allowance as a homeless person, and they didn't want to do that. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, even like the. You hear what I'm saying? I'm, yeah, I'm homeless without an income, and I'm trying to survive and take care of my three kids, and the government will not help me because I don't have an employment agreement. I'm not working at McDonald's flipping fucking burgers. That would make you employed, right? Yeah. So, but the funny thing is, I can't work at McDonald's. Because I'm not registered in this country, because the government doesn't want me, because I'm not employed. That, is what, like, that pisses me off, and then, and then I, 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 you know, I'm lost. 
not for myself, because I know I, I'm have, I use my nonlinear thinking to survive and I'm able to survive everything, almost everything. But I see people in line that are completely lost. And the only thing to do is to go into alcohol or, or cannabis or whatever to escape that linear world where they they where, where you're lost. You're lost. They don't want to have you. And, I... and my friends and family also didn't want to have me. Because I didn't fit the box. But you have three kids and now you're homeless. Why are you doing this? Why are you not just working at McDonald's or sorry, McDonald's or the Hilton or a front office manager? And I've tried to get many jobs, but I'm very nonlinear. So they look at my resume and they think, what the hell is this for kind of dude? This is a weird 47 year old. We don't want to talk to him. We don't understand what he's doing. I, I applied for more than 80 jobs. I didn't get a single invitation. Now I know what I did wrong. My resume looked like very nonlinear. So if I would apply for a job now, I would make a very linear job a resume that really fits into that job. And on that resume, there's only one focus and one focus only. And that's the focus they, they're looking for. And then hopefully they will invite me for a conversation. And then hopefully I will get the job. Then I'm I, lost in, in confidence in humanity when these things happen. I'm thinking, it, but, and then I go to organizations that are here in this world to help people that are lost. And then they say to me, this now becomes really funny. Yeah, but you're not a drug addict and, and you don't have a, a physical condition, so we can't help you. But I'm homeless and I want to be with my kids. Yeah. yeah, sorry. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe you should just get a job. Thank you, by the way, for this linear world, because that gave me a lot of power, motivation, and energy to start the octopus movement. And now you're validating other people who have. Um, I don't even know the word to describe my resume because it is so, there's so many different things that I feel like are worthwhile that I've done that ended up on that thing that I, yeah, put it together recently and was like, oh my gosh, like this person has no idea what they're doing with their life because it's this linear format thing mm. that forces me to put all of the cool things that I've done onto one thing and they don't all fit together but that's what makes me a generalist that's what makes me a creative that's what makes me like a powerful thinker across spectrums and until that's validated it's not I don't think it's ever going to be validated by Oh, well, yes. I, 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 I will predict something. Within a year, people like you are the ones who are going to get the best jobs. A year? Oh, yes. It's going to be very fast now. I used to think five to ten years, but now I'm thinking a year. Because your kind of people are, are capable of being very flexible and being able to connect so many dots in finding solutions that are not the obvious ones. And that's what our companies are going to look for. Mm -hmm. If you see, sorry, if you see what's happening in the world today, also looking back at the pandemic, look mm -hmm. at the, the linear thinkers responding to the pandemic and look at the non-linear thinkers responding to the pandemic. I don't have to explain this even. I can rest my case immediately. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Right or not? I don't know. I mean, well, my question is: Do we know what we're talking about with the with the reactions to the pandemic? That's an interesting one because a lot of people just following the rules, whatever those rules were. That would, to me, be like the linear reaction of like whatever the CDC says. Um, and, yeah, and I'm, I'm so I'm 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 not cheering for the rebels here, but I'm cheering for the creative people, the musicians. We're saying okay. I can't give concerts anymore. I can't do anything anymore. 
you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create a concert on Zoom. I'm talking about these first musicians that were doing that. Nobody mm -hmm. was doing that. Then everybody followed. I'm talking about the restaurant owners who were saying, you know, I will still, I will keep cooking in my kitchen and mm -hmm. I will flyer all the houses around my restaurant and I will serve them food and we do it in a different way. Yeah, and then you had the linear thinker that was receiving support from the government for crying out loud. So they were getting money and they were at home and they were complaining about on social media about the fact that they were bored. Those are the linear thinkers. I really appreciate that line, um, that 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 differentiation between yeah. them, because the people who sometimes I'm envious of those folks who just stayed home and like had a little vacation, and in some ways. And that's fine, but but don't but don't complain about the fact that you're bored and it's also horrible, and that you're complaining about uh, product delivery that's taking longer than normally. Mm -hmm. DHL, my God, you know why is it now taking a week instead of two days? Because <clears throat> other people are out there figuring out how to make how to be creative to keep life going because the linear systems around us were crashing down. And so it required, it required innovation and working together in new ways and pushing. Super cool. Yeah, and, super and, cool. and linear, linear parents had to work at home all of a sudden and they were complaining about their kids. Oh my God, the kids are at home. I can't focus. I don't know what to do. You're a flipping parent. Figure it out. It's your child. It has your DNA for fuck's sake, right? Yeah. do something together <gasps> so difficult now mm -hmm. and you yeah. had the non-linear thinkers sorry for stereotyping here but to make things clear they were excited you know they were having fun with the kids and oh let's do your homework together in an hour and then we let's play outside and let's do and let's do a zoom meeting together with my work then you can see what i'm i've seen creative and funny things happening during the lockdown where there was a lot of fun if you ask my kids my daughter who has dyslexia said recently to me she said dad the best time at school i had in my life was when we were at home hmm. because you understand how i learn you understand how i think so well and it went so fast and it was so easy for me to do everything cool i've yeah. i've I've heard a lot of different kids with different, different takes on it. I thought I, yeah, I think I've thought that was, has been very interesting to witness. Um, some kids thrive at home and then some kids not, you know, have the opposite and okay. just wondering what pieces, what pieces are for different kids is different, I suppose. And, um, but, but do you see that companies now today and in the near future, when people like that who respond in a creative, flexible way on things that are happening in the world, if, if everything is moving so fast as I think it's moving right now, then if you are an educational system, then you want to have teachers that are very flexible, very nonlinear, mm -hmm. right? And if you are an IT company and you're creating uh, uh, posts for companies, you're doing the marketing, the online marketing for companies, and now AI is taking over, they can do it. Oh, you want nonlinear thinkers in your company to say, okay, let's use this AI for this. Let's change the way we, we connect to our clients. Let's create a new service that fits on that AI. That's the kind of people you want, right? And not the Oh fuck! Mm -hmm. There's nothing what, we can do. <laughs> you know, and and okay, yeah, okay, and and now the government, now the government needs to solve this. This is also some a beautiful one. You know, I don't know what to do anymore. Now the government has to rescue me because that's yeah. the obligation of the government. Yeah, that's a big one here in the states. Is that the government will just save us because the there's there's a lot of intervening maybe 
Yeah, so you want nonlinear thinkers at the government as well. And I can tell you at the government right now, it's 99% linear thinkers. Yeah. Because that's yeah. how the system works. Also, with big companies, you want to have linear thinkers in your company because that's easy to manage. Can you imagine that all your staff is nonlinear? <laughs> it's all over the place. You don't want them. You have want, to know what they're going to do. Yeah, you, you need to... to manage these people. Yeah. Oh, shit. And then the managers who are managing people are, are linear thinkers themselves because that's why they become a manager because they were very good in managing their own box. So that's what happens. And so there's going to be a massive change there somewhere. And curious to see how that will work out. Me too. That's exciting. Yeah. yeah. Um. This might not make much sense as a question, but... Oh, cool. I like that. Do you think the world is a better place because of people like you? No. Why? Because it's already... A, a... It, I'm not changing anything. You know, there is... It's, it's there anyway. It's that simple. And I'm just allowing myself to see what I'm seeing right now. And I'm in conversation with others, but it's there anyway. And they're not thinking in a different way because they know the octopus movement or whatever. Maybe, maybe they get a bit inspired to think differently about things. Fine, but truly, essentially, it's 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 there anyway. But what do you see the role as, as the, maybe not catalyst, but like the get the gatekeeper or like this? So I don't like the term space holder, but like, like you seem like the person that's helping people acknowledge this. And like what we were saying at the beginning, like just creating a place or a space for adults and children to acknowledge these different ways of being or learn. Um, yeah, I like your answer, but I also think that your role is so required so that these people from all of these countries and all over the world can see it and can be connected. But I think there, everybody shines the light themselves on the things they want to see. And mm. I'm crazy enough with my ADHD brain to share that to everyone, what I'm, sh what I'm, what I'm looking at, because it's crazy to start a global movement out of nothing. What, what does it take to start a global movement? It's post every single day. Even when you have a headache, if you even when you think it's not going to work, even you need to keep going. It's a lot of effort. Keep going. It's ridiculous. You have to be crazy to do that, right? Constantly put attention on things that are there anyway. And then yeah. people recognize that and they start doing the same thing. And it's, that's what I, I don't know. You know, this is only one and a half year that I'm doing this. What the hell do I know? But I'm, I, nobody in the movement, I don't believe that, that, that they're like, oh, now I get it. I don't think so. Mm, that's cool. That's yeah. really cool. I like that answer. Oh, this is a weird question because earlier I was like, what, what gives you faith or hope? But this question is, what is the role of hope? Because, okay, let me back. Let me say, like, this is interesting. Have you ever seen the movie? I'm tangenting already. Um, have you ever seen the movie? It's a French movie called um, La Belle Verte. No. The Beautiful Green. The Green Beautiful. Um, it, I watched it last night. Um, one of my roommates is French and he said, it's the best French film ever made. And it was amazing. Um, it really gave me a beautiful perspective on humanity. Um, and me, and, and it provided me a lot of hope and inspiration, also some sadness, but, but I was, I, 
was inspired by the things that's that I find truly meaningful about humanity and um the role of hope and the role of imagining a better anything why is it important to imagine like why is it important that that us non-linear thinkers or anyone with that capacity you know kind of leans into that um well what if this could work well what about what if this could work because i think there's a lot of shadow in the what if what if what if what if what if but the but the golden shadow of that is the capacity to imagine a better world and i think creative people not only can imagine it but like can weave their way into living it you know around the the oppressive structures that linear models kind of Mm -hmm. built to keep us not creative but like to push against that to have hope to have faith to to imagine a better way and to actually work towards it Mm -hmm. um that's a different thing like that that's a I I don't know if linear if if like there's even a pathway maybe you can use a pathway to do that but but like I think you to see beyond any structure like anything that I feel like some a lot of the times really innovative people just look at everything that's been built and they just go beyond it or go past it or like something else entirely am I making sense yeah yeah like what it what is um is it imagination do you think well what is the why why is imagination important or what is that thing or what are you thinking right now (laughs) Well, if if visual thinking, that's what we're talking, you know, you can imagine something. And most of the time, I think it's visual thinking that we, when we're in a situation where it's difficult, when there's hardship, um, it really helps when you stand in line at a homeless office. And you're standing there and you're looking around you and you see misery and suffering and everything and hardship. But my only thing that I saw in my head was that I was going to be okay. And that my future looks bright and interesting and my kids are happy. And that helps. That really, (laughs) that helps a lot. And if if you don't have that, if 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 you don't have these visual thoughts of things that make you excited and inspired, and if that is gone, then it becomes very difficult because there is a lot of suffering. People get sick. Friends get sick, your parents get sick. There's cancer in the world. There is, there is, there is financial crisis. A lot. We we're not talking about financial crisis, right? But oh my God, there is financial crisis. And, oh dear. And let's pretend everything is okay, but it's not. And if you need, you need something to see that you're going to be fine and your kids as well. So my crazy thoughts about nonlinear thinking and the world that's going to be, that the educational system is going to change and that people like you and me are going to have the coolest jobs in the world, that's my visual thinking. It makes me a very happy person, even though I can be struggling uh, to get food on the table and whatnot. But that that thought of something exciting is happening, it keeps me going. And it keeps me going in a positive way, which is also very nice for my own kids and the, and the people around me. It's not about just keep going. That's why I think religion is not enough. Religion mm-hmm. helps in that perspective. It, it, it gives you the image you need, maybe, right? If, if you do well, you're going to heaven. If you do bad, you go to hell. And 
if you pray, then we will help you. That's nice. If, if, if you're in a tough position, that helps. But if you create your own image, which is a good one, that's even stronger than religion, I think. Ugh. I just hold, I just, sometimes I feel like I live in that, that like future oriented hope of like imagining something better. Mm -hmm. And I mean, homeless, <clears throat> homelessness is a, is a big one for me with, 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 um, I think when we last, I, when I first called you, it was because I had just gotten my real estate license and I had moved to a state to be a nature educator and why was I getting my real estate license and and I'm I'm also like doing summer camps with kids and like I'm cleaning houses and why am I doing all these different things I'm like putting effort into learning how to landscape and like none of these things seem cohesive um but like home home for the things that make us who we are like having a place for that Mm -hmm. um and for a lot of people you know a place to live provides that and yeah. um I'm working with that's what I imagine in in real estate like I, I'm surrounded by this linear bureaucracy and like so much corruption <clears throat> do you mind if I I might feel like I'm getting emotional <laughs> um but the, there's just got to be better ways to do it and I, there's, there's so much money and there's so much ingenuity and there's so much land and there's so much desire from, from human beings that, you know, have like just enough capacity to pull through and to work together. And I, and I just really believe and, and imagine that with just enough of that with us together and that's why I see your role as so beautiful and important. And I'm so grateful for the people who can see it and, and web it together. Just if, if nothing else to like reflect and remind people like you have, you have whatever's going on with you, it belongs here. And it is so important. And in that creative whatever capacity that makes you you is so valuable um and that's what I want to remind neurodivergent kids and and adults and all humans is that that creative capacity um and and there's a lot of creative capacity energy out there you know the, the younger generation look at my kids my oldest is 17 how flipping awesome he is, you mm. know. Of course, he goes against everything that is linear thinking. Not that he goes against the rules, not at all. He follows the rules, also the unwritten rules. But he has a very strong opinion for himself, and which is very close to nature. And in the end, that's what it is about, you know. It's... This is also something I find interesting. When people say, oh, let's go to nature. I find that a very interesting one. So they, they get in their car and they drive to the forest and then they go into nature. But it's, I'm, I'm constantly thinking, that's weird because <laughs> this is all nature and we're oh, nature. And we're nature. Where are we, and how weird. So that linear thinking pattern created the separation of not in nature and in nature and that's that's interesting yeah. because it that is. doesn't exist right not in nature doesn't exist right. then you're in space and you're still in nature in a way so yeah and it's the same what i think sometimes as well <laughs> and tease my kids about that that i say math doesn't exist numbers don't exist it's a set of rules we created around numbers and the rules exist but the numbers itself don't exist but we we're, we're caught up in that in these set of rules that it's there and and i use numbers and i use math of course but it's 
Let's go to nature. Fuck. What? That's weird. And but my I allowed my nonlinear thinking to go nuts, of course. Now I'm doing this. So I'm walking the dog. And I and I walk the street and all these houses, and I'm I'm looking at all these houses, concrete blocks, boxes. And I'm thinking, what the hell are we doing? Mm -hmm. And I see all these people in 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 these concrete boxes in the evening with the huge motherfucking flat screen. And I'm thinking, <laughs> how big can these monsters be? Even across the street, I can recognize the movie you're watching and I can read the subtitles. You know, it's it's and I'm across the street. It's weird. And and this is what they're doing in nature. They're 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 sitting in their concrete boxes watching TV every evening. Every evening, Sarah. It's I'm amazed by that. Uh, hey, I okay, yeah. fine. That's fine. I. But there's such a huge, large group of people, artists and creative thinkers, and and young people that are thinking in a different way. And awesome. I see it. Yeah, I see it, and and yeah. I'm very inspired yeah. by the young, by younger people yeah. and kids. I mean, ten years old. I can have wildly intelligent conversations about the state of humanity mm -hmm. with ten year olds. Mm -hmm. What bothers me, though, and one reason I'm passionate about becoming a well, I've always wanted to be a teacher. I just never wanted to do it in public schools. <laughs> um, what inspires me. Or did I say inspires? I don't know. Oh, maybe it's what inspires me, but it also burdens my heart is that so many of them have a negative idea about what people are because it's been taught that we are, we well, nature would be better without us. And how humans are so destructive to the planet that the planet would just be healthier if we weren't here. Hmm. And that's um, a narrative that to a degree i i was i was raised with like an ultra religious humans are sinful bodies of being or something and that's another thing so i can i can i can i can empathize with their feelings of like oh we're bad but what i try to work with them in just small conversations because i don't have much time with these students sometimes but this, but the overall philosophy that I feel like I'm coming out with is, or this desire, this desire to like instill in them that we're not like that, that innate, that, that shame that you seem to already have for your humanness can be reversed or it can be healed or it can be worked through with more creative, with more ways of seeing the world which i think children already have and for whatever the reason we're instilling we are instilling in them that maybe it's the the linear thing like this is right this no, is it's wrong. not maybe it is is what it is the linear thing that they're being taught at school tv yeah. and that's that's everything you know that 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 one so the one solution to heal nature is just to get rid of people. Yeah, and it's so that's so it bothers me a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but when I teach about nonlinear thinking, and I'm with a group of nine year olds in class, very stupid example maybe, but it it illustrates I think. What do you want to do when you grow up? And they're like, oh, I want to sing. I want to I want to share. And then. This little girl says, I want to be a vet or a dancer or an artist. I said, oh, that's cool. You can do all three. Mm -hmm. Go for it. And then this nine-year-old with her perfect dress, you know, perfectly, everything is perfect. Nine flipping years old is saying to me, no, Perry, that's not possible. And that illustrates for me everything. And I'm yeah. saying to her, listen, I'm 47 and you're nine and you're telling a 47-year-old <laughs> that that's not possible yeah. where I'm giving you the possibility to 
embrace everything. That's what you wanted to do it, you know? Cool. No, it's not possible. Cool, huh? And then I'm and I'm thinking, hmm. And then I explain and I show about nonlinear thinkers and I talk about Billie Eilish and I talk about whoever they know and explain more. And I'm like, oh, yeah. But so when you're at nine, you're already like, this is where we need to go. Makes sense because if you go to school at the age of four or five, whatever, and you're there five days a week and the teacher is telling you all the things that you need to learn, then that's what you're learning. And then it's very positive in many ways, but it's not in everything. I find it fascinating. I think, please be a vet, a dancer, and an artist all together, please. That's, you're going to be such a nice vet if you're also a dancer and an artist as a vet. Oh, you're going to be so rock and roll. It's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? I, I think a few years ago, I would have been like, well, maybe that's because like the linear thinking is innate in our, in us as humans. Cause for whatever the reason, I'm just like fascinated with being a human. And so I just think of it things on a human level, which I know is transcendent and like not always like in the here and now with the individual like people, but there's commonalities in us. And I, maybe this, the, like being able to think in a linear way is a, useful thing that we're capable of and that's why nine-year-olds can access it so well mm -hmm. but also learning about human development and and children and how impressionable and how adaptable we are we can adapt to almost anything I think like well yeah you can also train a child to be very linear from a very young age of course in this that's in the same way do. it's what we do and you, what we so do. like and, what, we're, and we're very good at it Yes. And, and so I think you can also train them to be nonlinear yeah, and how to so. wield that in their education. And do both. Wow. Mm -hmm. That would be wow. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I think this might be my final question. Because we're at an, an hour and a half. And I feel like we could keep going. But I No, we need to stop somewhere. Otherwise, if if people are still listening now. That's already a miracle, right? Yeah, one and a half hour. That's <laughs> normally you you watch a very good movie for one and a half hour, right? Yeah. La Bella Verde. An hour exactly. And a half last to night. say something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Final um, question. Go for it. This is um this goes back to some of the tenets that I was founding my my mission on. And and this is the one that really stuck out to you. And now it's going to be rephrased in a question one of my beliefs is that art will save us why perry why will art save us because <laughs> art is so cool i love art and and one of the reasons i love art is give me the definition of art <laughs> it doesn't exist right there there are definitions but it's never it's never a linear definition of of art so that's mm -hmm. why i'm so excited about art it's <laughs> i've i have a book the philosophy behind the definition of art or something like that and it's a very thick book with three philosophers or two and they're debating about what is art they can't figure it out <laughs> So art allows us to be nonlinear. Art allows us to share our thoughts, our ideas, our impressions, our beliefs, our frustrations. Everything can be brought back in art. And there are no unwritten rules in art and that's why i love art because everything else in our world has unwritten rules not art and of course there are of course there are unwritten rules in art right if they're there they're always there but 
in, in the essence of art is that there are no unwritten rules because mm. otherwise art can never develop otherwise art can cannot exist and we linear thinkers are of course trying to bring these unwritten rules in art and otherwise we don't understand otherwise art is too complicated and we need to simplify it but in essence the art is the world of unwritten rules that we've created and that's awesome and we we see something we hear something we feel something and it spikes our emotions and without being able to explain why and it triggers thoughts and ideas and that's why art will save the world it connects there's no diversity in art you know it's it doesn't matter it's that's art there are no unwritten rules my mind's still wrapping around that because there it is like there are unwritten rules for every step of a of a in a lot of other areas of life but especially for a linear process like oh you just assume that you this is the next step yeah. or something yeah. but there's none of that in whatever art is no whatever that thing that strikes awe or beauty no. or no. that's wow. why it's fascinating wow yeah i believe in that yeah me too my yeah. favorite artist mark rotko he drives me nuts that dude <laughs> Mark I, who? Rothko. Roth, Rothko? Yeah. Okay. I think I think his paintings are so I remember so well the first time I saw them was in 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 London. The portrait gallery, there was an exhibition of him. And I was standing in front of that huge painting with only two colors. And I was standing there like, "Oh, okay." And I became very emotional and I and I started crying. And I was thinking, oh fuck, what am I doing? This is weird, right? What is happening? <laughs> oh, uh, I'm going to do something else. Let's see another painting. Later, I discovered that more people have that with his paintings. What it is, I don't know. I don't care what it is. It's just it's something if if you listener wherever you are have the opportunity to see a mark rothko painting in real life once in your life go for it and we even have a museum in the netherlands where you can book your private space with the mark rothko painting i've never been there i still need to do that so you can book your 10 minutes alone with his painting and wow. then the door closes you're in a room with a huge mark rothko and you can go and cry the hell out of yourself and mm -hmm. nobody will see you. It's beautiful. Wow. And Mark Rothko got a divorce with his wife because his wife was selling her paintings for a higher price than he was. And she thought that it was ridiculous talking about unwritten rules. So she didn't want to be married with him. She, she thought he was a loser. Now his paintings, huh? we don't even know who is ex-wife is we we don't even know yeah it's interesting wow. yeah that is interesting that's yeah. a good story art yeah i i kind of whatever the hell i'm doing with my life i feel like it's art in some way yeah. maybe because yeah. it's no not maybe go if... It, it it is and i remember i remembered so well when i was discovering something about myself and what i wanted to do and i discovered that i just want to be an artist mm -hmm. that's it yeah and my sister was always the artist and not me and i wanted to go to the arts academy but you know you're not an artist you're an entrepreneur and, and blah blah now i'm i'm an artist and i'm so happy with that I'm creating an art book with 398 nonlinear thinkers i'm for me the octopus movement is a is a work of art it's not a company i'm an artist and that well, allows me to to step back from all the unwritten rules because i'm an artist and nobody well, you... can tell me you're not an artist i like oh. that yeah i like that too yeah Will will you send um the information on that book so yeah. we can see all of I it? We'll do that. Yeah. 
It's in the make. I, I hope I will finish it next year, 2023. I think so. I still have 80 more spots available in the book, and then I have 398. And why 398? It's an octopus. Three hearts, nine brains, eight arms. That's why I wanted to use the number 398. Wow. That's cool. And it's, it's people from all over the world. Youngest is six. The oldest is 82. Cool. It's And they all write a nonlinear story. So they don't write intentionally like this is my nonlinear story. They just write a story, whatever it is. It can be mm -hmm. about themselves, about their bicycle, about how the weather is outside. And they just all write stories and they all share a picture of themselves. And that together is my work of art that I'm working on for three years now that is going to be holding nonlinear thinking in your hands. It's a book mm -hmm. without any rules. And it's just there and it's that's it. For me, that's my work of art. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, I am looking forward to the way both of the masterpieces of art of our lives continue to unfold i feel very validated in um and i was i really needed that i really needed your your reflections and your work to come to me at this point in my life because my desire to find a home for our humanity both in the way people live on land and the how we connect to the earth and each other and the kinds of villages that I like literally want to build so that people have a better more options for for places to live mm -hmm. um, that aren't just you know these gray boxes where you can actually afford it or these like countryside mansions where you know there's just so much middle ground and so much innovation and so much artwork that can be infused into a seemingly broken um linear system that yeah. that i think our humanity can really thrive in all of it i don't know we'll see so what's the title of your podcast again home for humanity i no. think so yeah Home, home for, for humanity. humanity cool home for so, my humanity and home and what kind and what kind of people are you looking for to interview in your podcast humans humans just humans humans and stories humans and stories humans and stories and people who who know where to find that who yeah. know how to access that thing that's like I don't want to say thing that makes me human because like there's a lot of shitty things that make me human I think but maybe that will become more clarified over time oh definitely but... and after 20 interviews you know exactly what mm -hmm. it is you're looking for because yeah. it seems so vague home for my mm -hmm. humanity but but I also plan on interviewing since I'm in real estate interviewing real estate people and being like well what have you seen when you build things like this um what happens to the land what happens to the people what happens to the value of if anything what is value i mean these things that i learned in real estate school they define value they define what's real they define that's it's called real estate because we actually have to give land we have to call it real we have to make up a definition for value and then call it real so that we can give it a piece of paper yeah, so that yeah. then we can do something with the piece of paper to represent the thing that is real. It's a lot. And so I, yeah, I don't know. You need yet. to create rules around what's real and what's not and, and value that. And that's how it works. Yeah. It's interesting. Cool. Inter huh? Cool. Thank you, Sarah. That was Thank fun. You, that was fun. Yeah. Till next time. Till next time.